All right. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. We're going to start this uh, again here. And uh, we left off on this slide. And uh, we talked about there's no unified religious entity. Here's a quote from one of the Hindu scholars related to that. And hopefully. Uh, he, uh, he says, we venture to predict that Hinduism is not a religion at all, but a series of loosely strung and infinitely varied sacerdotal and sociological uh, artificial conventions to which a religious verisimilitude has been imparted by the ancient lawgivers, but which is nevertheless daily undergoing endless fluctuations, not only in any given locality, but throughout the Hindu world. Now that's a mouthful, but uh, basically he's saying there's no unified aspect of Hinduism, and he uh, um, calls them a, but a series of loosely strong, infinitely varied, sacerdotal and sociological artificial conventions. That's a mouthful, uh, and uh, you know, and they're changing, and so uh, that's. A one of their own scholars' view of it, and I think uh, uh, that helps us to understand how they understand even their own uh, religion. All right, so uh, what is Hinduism? Uh, and first of all, it's uh, less about a unified religion, uh, more about diverse different beliefs and allowing different uh, beliefs uh, and practices and that occur under the heading Hinduism. But there's Hinduism worshiping this god or this goddess uh, or the, this philosophy uh, versus another philosophy, all those type of things. Uh, it has no human founder. It's not like Buddhism, say, go back to their, you know Buddha uh, or uh, Islam, go back and say, okay, well, this goes back to Muhammad and he gets his uh, uh, vision and scriptures, you know, so th there is no founder. Uh, it has no defined core beliefs. Uh, you know, you, you can't go like you do in Hindu and in Christianity and uh, Islam and find this core belief. Okay, one God and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, there, there's no common scripture that guides all Hindus, uh, other than a general recognition of the importance of the Vedas. They would all, uh, most, well, not all, but a good many of them would say, think the Vedas are very important. But how they use them and how important they are, whether they consider them inspired or not, it will vary considerably between belief systems. So, and with that comes no standardized worship practices. You can go to one temple or another, and it'll be different uh, for gods and goddesses. Uh, I did go to a, uh, I was in a Hindu temple one time with a guy that was from India. And uh, although he he and his family have been Christians for quite a while. And, uh, you know, they had different gods and goddesses in different alcoves in the uh, temple. Then there was a separate building for some of the more popular gods. Uh, but uh, there are some things that seem to me to be commonality. They, they, people would sit before the image and, you know, might be reading something from the Vedas or they uh, put a little sacrifice, little uh, things like to put money in front of the statue. The priests will later come around and pick it up or set food in front of the statue and things. So there are uh, some forms of things that are may be done, but they they don't have to be and different uh, belief systems that will do different practices. Uh, so it has no central religious authority, uh, even though I, it's the recognized religion of India. But as far as a re centralized religious authority, it does, doesn't exist. Uh, and they themselves say they have millions of uh, gods. And I think uh, what I said earlier, I think uh, one scholar said it's about 320 million. I don't know who counted them, 
but uh, that's what they say. But in any case, they see that that many gods and goddesses out there. Uh, you have uh, what's called uh, Sanatana Dharma. Uh, and uh, uh, basically, Dharma has to do with your moral or religious duty. And uh, Sanatana, ageless or eternal type of idea, uh, is a very important uh, Hindu uh, concept and uh, so you uh, need to kind of keep in mind especially this term dharma uh, they this is the term they prefer uh, to describe their own religion instead of hinduism they would call it sanatana dharma and uh, in doing that uh, uh, dharma being a broad term describing righteousness, as we'd say in in Christianity, or duty, moral duty, or moral teachings, uh, or laws or regulations that uh, tell you how you should live. Uh, and, but it can go beyond just that. It can uh, even the order of the universe can be seen as uh, this uh, having a duty or a, a way it should operate. Um, so Sanatana itself is uh, a ageless or eternal moral order or duty. Uh, and for the cosmos in different philosophical beliefs, uh, it's, it would be equivalent to natural law for the cosmos uh, in, in those that, depending on which view, worldview is taken. They have different ones. So, uh, so Dharma, duty, uh, but that duty will vary to what caste you're in. If you're in a lower caste, you have different duties than those in the higher castes and all in between. Uh, but every caste has its duty, and its Dharma. Uh, and one must conform to, uh, above all to her class and, uh, and, and caste. Uh, if you want to have a good reincarnation. So if you go through the cycle of samsara, what we call reincarnation, you know, if you've done your duty well and you, you have uh, uh, more good karma than bad karma, then you can reincarnate into a higher class. But if you don't, you could go downward or stay in the same. And uh, But there's no other way to get out of your class. You know, you have to reincarnate and to move up into other classes. And it is a very strong uh, cultural thing. And so getting out of it, uh, you know, you just don't, you just don't do it. You have to basically work within your caste. Um, so, uh, but uh, the idea of Hinduism in this uh, is a political identification. So. Hindu becomes a political identification as far as the government is uh, concerned. All right, and uh, so uh, it, uh, Sanatana Dharma, uh, it describes myth, mythic, mystical texts referring to the formless or transcendent self. Uh, so, uh, you see associated with this this kind with this Sanatana Dharma, this kind of text, um, and uh, uh, even abstract uh, uh, theological treatises, but they you'll see they don't conform. They're not you know this they don't agree with each other. A lot of times they'll take opposite ways. Uh, so they're saying, how, how do we define truth? And they'll come up with different ways of finding it that are in conflict with each other, but they're all there among uh, their writings. Uh, there's a, a lot of uh, aesthetic meditation practices in some of them, uh, you know, to help uh, to achieve moksha, release from cycle of samsara, uh, and so you can be uh, absorbed into the eternal um, ca uh, chaos of Brahma, uh, Brahma, which we'll talk about 
later. And then uh, there's this large pantheon of uh, deities, uh, which they themselves have their duties uh, as well, because the gods and goddesses go through the cycle of reincarnation too. And so uh, we'll talk about this later, but it has to do with purity. And they, you know, further up you go, if you're a human being, you can eventually reincarnate into one of the God categories. And uh, and so that is possible, but the gods are going through it too. All right, so um, this will be the last one on this section. Uh, it's extremely varied. Uh, personal beliefs are allowed, so you can pretty much find any kind of belief you out there under the umbrella of Hinduism. Uh, but Hinduism can't really be separated from its culture. Uh, and uh, uh, I may mention this later as well. Uh, yeah, uh, it's in the, the uh, well, this is the, ne the next slide. So uh, got this slide and one more to go. Uh, but uh, we'll, t we'll talk about this in a second. And then uh, to be Hindu, uh, uh, we can find some core things that are important pretty much across the board. Uh, that is the regard the Vedas uh, as either divinely inspired or uh, to some, uh, some level authoritative. Uh, but that has levels from suggestions all the way up to inspired. Uh, then you got uh, one that's pretty much across the board, except the caste system. Uh, and uh, that's uh, one of the things that uh, uh, Christians have taught, you know, that that would be something that was is not a good system because it keeps people in a certain level. But uh, it is a part of the culture and uh, extremely strong in pretty much all the religious uh, beliefs. Uh, respect and veneration of various levels of deities and spirits, and including the protection of cows. That would be a general rule across the board. And then uh, recognizing uh, these uh, uh, scriptures uh, does not mean that you have to accept them literally to be true, literally, uh, or that you even have to practice what it commands uh, in that regard. All right, and then this this was actually the last slide. It's not a creedal religion. You know, you don't have these creed like the Bible, uh, God, you know, there's one God, and, uh, you know, he, he is the one that provides, you know, uh, salvation of humanity and so forth. You just don't have the type of creedal religion like you do in Christianity and Islam and a few others. Um, so Christianity and Islam are both creedal uh, and uh, when they come to faith in God through belief and conviction, uh, you know, for a Muslim, Islam, anyone can become a Muslim by saying the Kalima and uh, Christianity uh, through faith in Christ uh, for them. But they when uh, a non-Hindu wants to say, well, can I convert to Hinduism? Uh, and uh, so a non-Hindu cannot hold the same beliefs as Brahman, friend, uh, because uh, he's still considered an outcast. He's not a Hindu. And so we have to understand that these castes aren't easily broken. And so if you're a Brahmin, which is a, a higher caste, uh, you're not Hindu, so you're, you're in the non-caste uh, category or you're an outcast. And uh, so how do you become a Hindu? And uh, this is what the response is. Let him live a pious life, and then after many transmigrations, his soul may at least uh, reborn, be reborn into a Hindu family. So basically, the only way you can become a Hindu is when you die, you're reincarnated as a Hindu. And uh, so there's really, uh, uh, you know, it's not an evangelistic religion. They're not trying to convert people, 
because you'll be born into it if your reincarnations allow it. Okay, so we're going to cut it off, this uh, second one off here. And uh, stop that.